Have you ever encountered a hurdle with launching or growing your business? Listen, there are two things that run a business, the back end and your soft skills. I'm telling you right now, if these are in place, you'll lose clients and you'll lose money. Don't want that? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Dana. Hey, I'm Sarah. We're your hosts who are going to tell you how it is give you tips and tricks, and even occasionally bring on a guest that care about supporting you grow your business organically and nurture authentic relationships. Are you ready? Welcome back to Entrepreneur Encounter. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode focused on solving problems in an effective way. Last episode, hopefully you tuned in, we discussed the importance of problem solving. And this go round, we're going to take it a step further and talk about the difference steps of solving a problem to help you approach it with confidence and have a better outcome for not just yourself, but your entire team or for your client. Or if you're a mom like myself, your toddlers, because sometimes they don't want to listen to your problem solving. So having simple steps to go through and lean on can help you control the situation a little bit better. So what are the steps to solve a problem? There are seven steps. First, you're going to want to define the problem. Then you're going to want to gather information. Step three is to generate possible solutions. Step four, evaluate options. Step five, choose the best option. Step six, implement the solution. And step seven, you're going to want to evaluate the results. Now, with these seven steps, we're going to discuss in detail how to go through the steps. So step one is define the problem. When you are faced with a problem, you're going to have to identify the root cause. Defining the problem clearly is going to help you understand the problem. And it's going to help you address what's going on and being able to what we call treating the symptoms of the problem. I want to add here with identifying the root cause. This is going to be the gentle parenting side of me coming out. But it really does work in so many different areas of life. I promise you guys, this whole day. Identifying the root cause is, if you can, focus on the actions. Every action is highlighting a need. Some need is not being met. So if you're overwhelmed as an entrepreneur, then your need for organization is not being met to bring it real life. In the case of a toddler, if they are crying a lot, or what is an adult seems like for no reason, a need of theirs is not being met and they don't understand how to communicate it because they've never had to deal with it before. Well, many of us in the audience are new entrepreneurs and you've never had to deal with these emotions and feelings and problems before. So your actions, your feelings are communicating some well, a need that is not being met within your business or maybe within your personal life that is now affecting your business. So identifying, are you spending too much time on social media? So now you don't have time to work on client work. Are you like just throwing spaghetti and hoping one random strategy works? And that's causing the overwhelm of, gosh, my business isn't growing. Then focus on one strategy at a time. Get really good at it, master it, and add a second strategy. Stick to the one that's working, those things. That leads us into it helps to generate creative solutions. Because now you have a clear definition of what the problem is. You've taken like the bird's eye view and you've generated more effective solutions and you have a, you know where you're going specifically and not just aimlessly, not a, I think I want to go here. I think this might be the problem. And it's more of a, I recognize that this is the problem. And these are the steps that I feel best align when solving them. My question is, so when you are able to look at the actions that you're having, the emotions that you're having or whatever you're going through, do we think that's going to help you gather the information to take better action to be able to solve that problem? The actions, what is that you need? Because obviously there's a problem and there are needs that are not being met. Mm -hmm. Do you think that to be able to figure out what needs to be met, you need to gather certain information to figure out how to put that into action and defining the problem and that will help you create a solution that would fit your needs? Yes. So one, I am very big on self-education and like I dive into random topics all the time. But in the case of this, 
I would almost like not necessarily get a journal and like feelings journal, but the times that you are feeling overwhelmed, as hard as it may be, take a moment to pause and just write down like what were you doing right before the overwhelm like took over and see if that's it. If not, look at earlier in the morning. Like, did you start off on a bad day? Like, your coffee just didn't work and you spilled your coffee. And so that was frustrating and it slowed you down. So maybe you're tired because you're not properly caffeinated as the entrepreneur caffeine addict that most of us are. Did you not sleep well the night before? And that's why you're tired. Maybe you don't even drink caffeine and you just didn't get enough sleep. So you were woken up too early or whatever the case may be. So taking that time to reflect on just things that are outwardly affecting you on the inside. I look at TikTok a lot for real quick, gentle parenting tip or how to recognize those needs through the behavior because behaviors are triggering to us as adults. And so we just want to kind of like bury our head in the sand or uh, walk away from it. But that's not solving the problem. That's just kind of putting a bandaid on her. And then tomorrow it's going to be just as bad or worse. And you're going to need a bigger bandaid. So really taking the time to kind of step outside of the box or even find someone else safe to talk to. I talk to my bookkeeper when I'm overwhelmed and I say, oh my gosh, this is happening. Or I don't know why, but I'm stressed about this. And most of the time it has nothing to do with money, but she's really amazing. And so she lets me vent to her. Shout out to her. So that helps me have the outside view too of, well, what else is happening? And it kind of gets me talking and without realizing, I then can pinpoint well, this happened. So I'm tired. Where this happened, and I feel like I don't have enough time. Or I realized I was aimlessly scrolling on social media and not engaging in conversation that can help move me forward. Like you said, talk to somebody. Ask somebody that's either like had the experience that you've been through or that's going through it at the same time. You want to conduct research. When people think of research, they think, oh, I'm just going to go on Google and just find a bunch of random stuff to maybe help me solve my problem. But I really think that when you're doing research, it's more so like having the conversations and asking the questions and figuring out, again, we're going back to finding the root cause of the problem. So after you define the problem, you got to gather the information. You got to figure out like what is going on. And then the information that you gather, everybody's going to have different perspectives and you can even general it, like write everything down as to what type of information that you have and see what works for you. I think with the gathering information, one of the things you had mentioned before is kind of asking the experts, but this is where I strongly encourage entrepreneurs, especially budding entrepreneurs, to find that community. And it can be family members, it can be close friends, but honestly, find other entrepreneurs that are one, in the same boat as you, but also that are farther ahead that like you just are super inspired by. Maybe you don't directly message them, but see how, because I guarantee the ones that are farther ahead of you are going to share, oh my gosh, I had this problem and this is how I solved it. Whether it's direct like that or within their own Facebook groups, They'll say, you guys, I totally don't have internet today because the house being built next to me, the construction company somehow cut the line. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to, and they're going to list off what they're doing. That actually did happen a couple of weeks ago. She was launching a challenge and the day it was supposed to go out, she was going to do it live, but then they cut the internet line. So she, in real time, mentioned in the group, hey, this is not going to go live today. I'm going to go here to record everything real quick. You're going to have the bare bones. But as soon as I get internet, I'm going to redo it for you guys so that you have the full thing. So she opened up the communication and let people know the ground she the immediate problem because that was pretty obvious. But she provided a solution and she opened up the door for anyone to ask questions more so since it was just like bare bones providing the service. But this is someone that I look up to. So I was like, man, she handled that with such grace. So I'm essentially secondarily asking her for her advice. If something like that happens to me, well, this is how I know I'm going to handle it. I'm going to go to another place. I'm going to let people know I'm going to do a redo later if I have the opportunity and things like that. Like it seems silly, 
But we're in online space, especially if you're an online service provider, you don't have internet, then you're screwed. And that's stressful. But we can fix it. So we changed the mindset of, I can't get this out, shifted it to, how can I solve this problem? And that's a big shift with gathering information is your focus is not constantly saying, I can't do this. It's how can I solve this problem? And you're going to be very resourceful in figuring out, finding a solution. It's funny when us as entrepreneurs, you know, especially like when we're so new to everything, a year, two years, and we think that we are the only ones going through it, but it's not. Every entrepreneur, whether you're new, you've been in business for 10 years, it doesn't matter. You're going to end up facing some sort of problem and you're going to have to be resourceful and try to figure out like, how am I going to solve this? Yeah. So don't think that just because you're new and everybody else has it all together because they've been it for longer than you, but just know that things happen and we should always like come together and help each other out to solve these problems. Especially if you're a solopreneur, especially in the beginning, because you're wearing all of the hat. So if you don't have a team, you still have a community to lean into, whether that's through a local networking group or at this point, I don't remember how we found each other, but we found each other and we don't live in the same state. We don't have the same schedule, but we can quickly text or vent live X, Y, Z. So it doesn't feel as long. Even if your community is a community of one, finding that person to help you generate possible solutions or even just to not even provide solutions, just to listen. Half the time, I would say not even half. We're like 75% of the time. I don't need someone to generate solutions. I just need someone to listen. And then I'm probably going to already work on with the solution. I just need to get it off of my shoulders. So I remember what TV show it was. But the main character, she was like, sometimes I just need a good cry. And then I go on about my day. And I was like, you know, I've never resonated with something more in my life as an entrepreneur. Sometimes I just need to stress. People can't see me pointing back. I can need to stress, brain dump things from my business onto paper. And then the next morning, I'm going to wake up refreshed and be like, all right, let's do this. And I can do it. I just need to get it off my head, off my thing, and move forward. Exactly. And so for those that are listening, like, that's what we're here for. If you just need events, if you need the community into which, like, you need somebody just to talk to, bounce ideas off, that's why we wanted to create this show and create the Facebook community that we have so that you can have a space to be able to do that. We are your virtual cheerleaders to encourage creativity, to find multiple solutions, and how to the box they need. We'll always have a backup plan. My event planning background, well, I will have a plan A, B, C, all the way through Z. Like, if this doesn't work, we're going to try this. If this doesn't work, well, how about this option? Maybe we mix A and B and come up with D, and we'll see what happens. Like, we'll always be open to helping you be your best self in, this, in whatever business that you have. So step four and step five is to evaluate your options and choose the best solution. So when you are gathering the information and generating the possible solutions, you can literally like take a piece of paper, have a pros and cons section, and look at all the solutions that you have and jot down the pros and cons of each and determine which option is better for you. Look at the outcome. And then after that, you're able to just kind of look at that breakdown and then figure out what is best for you. And then what you're going to do after that is step six, you're going to implement the solution. Implementing the solution ensures that the solution that you choose is put into action and that it's going to help you achieve your desired outcomes, your goals, and then kind of step back and just kind of see, did it work? What happens when you came to that solution? So one solution that I would say that would fit with most entrepreneurs that might be listening is time management, not feeling overwhelmed by not having enough time in the day to get all the things done. One of my things this year was to really focus on networking, connections and interacting and touch points, all of that in my business. But I felt like I still wasn't doing it as best as I could, which is very frustrating to me. 
I use HoneyBook as my CRM. And when I finally started implementing it, I wish I could do a visual. So maybe I'll do this on my Facebook page. Not today. No, it'll be another day. But I started adding anytime I got a business card from someone at a networking group, they immediately go on my CRM. So I was just sending an email and I was like, oh, I'll remember. I don't remember. It's not written down. It doesn't exist in my brain for the most part. So I created an automated workflow of just tasks. No email templates, no nothing, just tasks of 12 steps, I think. Every 20 days, I will get a reminder in my CRM to either email this person or interact with them on social media so that I can keep those touch points. I can continuously see, are they having a great time? And I can cheer them on. Or are they frustrated with something? And they're venting because so many people do use social media to vent on and just, man, I'm having an overwhelming day or whatever the case may be. Or man, I have this cold that just won't go, which I can't shake a stick at. Well, and I can go and like provide care and understanding and say, hey, how can I support you during this time? I'm not pitching my services. I'm just being a good human being. But if I don't have those reminders for me to even go check, they may not show up on my feed for me to know, or it may not show up on my feed for three or four days. And by then it's over and I've missed an opportunity to show them I care. So with knowing all these steps, we encourage all of you listeners to think of a problem that it could be small. It doesn't even have to be business related. What's something that's going on that you're having trouble with? And one, you can take these steps and write it down on a piece of paper and write out all the pros and cons and everything like that. Also, you can come into the Facebook group and just create a post or send us a message and say, hey, like, this is what's going on. Like, I need help. And Dana and I will definitely help you into going down each step and getting that solved for you. So as always, we want to thank you guys for listening in. And again, just kind of reiterate what Sarah said. We're always here. Our inbox is open. Our DMs are open. Make sure you come and check out our Facebook page. Sign up for our newsletter because then you'll get more behind the scenes look of who we are and how we support each other. A positive attitude may not solve every problem, but it makes solving any problem a more pleasant experience. It's such a pleasant experience. With our combined years of experience, we want you to encounter the best of your entrepreneurship journey, encourage personal self-education, and have weekly inspiration to elevate your business. For more information from where to find us, check out the show notes. Do you have something to share? for will to be a guest. Be in for email us. And we care for you enough for being here with us. Until next time.